Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about some throwback favorites from September 2014. I'm going to link that original video below and I'll put it in a card if you want to take a gander at my favorites of the month. If you want to look at that video, just know that, man, there's been a lot of growth since that particular upload. Um, I look back at my older videos and I, I literally cringe. I just, I can't even watch it because I don't even feel like I'm watching myself. It takes time to get used to being comfortable in front of a camera and just letting your true personality flow right through. Um, it's really easy to like, you know, like be more reserved and just stay on task. But I've decided that I just would rather be myself wholeheartedly, get a little off track, have a longer video, have my thoughts running all over the place because that's who I am. So I'm a little bit more reserved there, but we've learned a lot. I've grown a lot in the past three years. So let's get into this. If you guys like this too, let me know. Like this video. And if you're new, welcome, subscribe. We would love to have you here. So the first thing on my favorites from 2014, three years ago, was a hairspray. And it was Kenra's Super Volume Hold Finishing Spray number 25. I had used that for years. In high school, when I used to get my hair done. That's the hairspray I bought and, and so on and so forth. For years, I always just used that. My hairstylist, uh, they carried that brand. And so I'd always just buy it because she used it. Um, and I liked that hairspray. I haven't repurchased it because here's the thing. That particular hairspray, the handle or the sprayer nozzle always got goopy and you'd have to like hold it upside down to run underwater and it just got really annoying to me because it is a stickier hairspray but it is also a super hold. The most recent one that I have that I purchased is the Sebastian Shaper Plus Original, their extra hold hairspray. This is not as sticky as that. I don't use a lot of hairspray anymore, quite honestly. I just like do a heat protectant hold thing and I do my leave-in stuff and whatever. I do a little on my bangs because they tend to get uh, out of control. I like the sprayer on this though. It has a nice mist kind of funky of a smell. I think it holds nicely. I don't think it's as stiff of a hold as that Kenro would be. Um, but I do like this. I don't hate it. So this is what I'm using right now. I thought I would give you some options as to what I liked then and what I'm currently using now so I don't leave you hanging. Next on the list is the Freeman Clay Mask which, oh my gosh, those take me way back to like junior high. My friends would have those and we'd go over to each other's homes and we'd mask. Um, but it was the chocolate and strawberry one. And I'd even mentioned in that video that I didn't care that it didn't actually do anything for my face. I mean, it was hydrating and it just, it felt good. But it was more of like, hey, I'm having a break. I'm drinking a glass of wine and doing a mask. It was just more about the, the moment and just the relaxation than like this is actually doing something for your face. So I have two masks that I use in my current skincare routine. I talked this to death on my channel. If you are new to my channel, um, you may have missed this, but in the past year, well, since last fall, really, I have just, this, I've been using this a ton. So this is the May Lindstrom Skin, the Problem Solver Mask. It is a powdered mask. You activate it with water. You get a ton of product. Oof. A little of this goes a very long way. It's very effective in reducing your pore size, calming any redness, if you have rosacea, if your skin's irritated, problematic skin, um, if you need to de-stress your skin, maybe it's congested. Like, it really is a problem solver. It's named correctly. It works. It's awesome. It's got amazing ingredients in it. Nothing, no fillers, no artificial crap. I believe this brand is cruelty-free and organic. I could be wrong on that, but um, I know May Lindstrom does um, beautiful, beautiful um, skincare products. So that's the first one I'd recommend. If you're looking for a cruelty-free, all-natural, organic option, this Eminence brand, this is a newer brand to me. I got a bunch of products this summer, and I've been using them, and I totally fell in love. It is just... The whole experience of the products, they all are natural. So when you open them up, they're just very like, man, you just feel like you're transported out to nature. And, oh, it's wonderful. So this mask is great for decongesting. Also, um, it's a balancing mask duo. You have the charcoal area. Not the charcoal area. The charcoal mask for the T-zone area to help with pores, decongesting, get, getting rid of those blackheads, whiteheads kind of thing. And then the white side is for your cheeks. So I, I actually really enjoy this one because I have more combo skin right now. I get kind of oily in the T-zone, but yeah, my, my cheeks don't. So I like the, the cheek side to help if you have dry cheeks or anything like that. This is going to help moisturize them. Now, if this particular mask doesn't suit your fancy, Eminence does sell a whole slew of different types of masks for different skin issues. Wow, I know this is already going to be a long video because I'm very long-winded. I have a very hard time condensing things because it's like I have so much to say. How can I say it in three seconds? And I don't even want to edit myself anymore. Like I'm so just, 
like anti whatever I just want to be me completely so okay and we're still rambling we're still rambling I had talked about the Cebu Beauty skincare line that was this current skincare I was using three years ago I still like that stuff like I never repurchased it but I used it all up and I totally loved it my skin reacted kindly to it and that's the true test of whether or not I will repurchase things if if they're irritating to my skin or I really don't see a difference like you can use stuff but if it doesn't make a difference, like you're not really seeing it doing anything, then I definitely don't, uh, I just wouldn't recommend it. But that Cebu line was beautiful. I really liked the cleanser and the moisturizer was very lovely. Next was the City Lash Lash Growth Serum. That was my first introduction or even, like I didn't know there was such a thing as a serum you could put on your lashes and it would make them grow longer and thicker and fuller. I was like, what? Um, I naturally have very short, stubby lashes. I have on lashes today. Lashes honestly look best on camera. I just realized, am I in focus? Yes. Um, they really do look best on camera and in photos and stuff. I, it's just the way it rolls. I don't know what to tell you. I've done it both ways. Um, and, and anyway, so the current one I've been using is the Rapid Lash Eyelash Enhancing Serum. Now you can purchase this at Ulta, which is why I like the conven convenience of that because you get your points. And you can also buy this on Bed Bath & Beyond and you can use their 20% off coupon and you can use Ulta's 20% uh, off coupon on this as well. Um, this works. It's inexpensive. I don't remember how much the City Lash one was. I believe they actually sent that to me, City Cosmetics or something. Um, but I purchased this one, and I would definitely repurchase it because it actually works. Here. I got Elsa in here. She's like, Mom, what are you doing? You got all the lights on in this room. It's hot outside. So, yeah, I did turn all the lights on, so I hope it's a little bit brighter. I moved a lamp in here. Actually, I have two lamps. I don't know. This is what we're working with now. Next was a top coat. It's the Sally Hansen Diamond Shine Base and Top Coat. I still like that. I never repurchased it because you know when you buy something and then somebody talks about something or a new product comes out and you want to try it and so I just never got around to repurchasing that one. But I do have two others. So the HK Girl, I've talked about this a lot. I do like this. However, when it gets down to like here, what happens is it gets super goopy. Like I just painted my nails this morning and it was so hard to get out when it gets down to the bottom and it gets really goopy and like stringy. Can you see that? I don't know if you can, but it just, I don't know. It gets hard to work with. I do like this. It is fast drying. It makes your nails super shiny. It creates a very nice, thick, solid like top coat, which is what you want. You don't want one that's too thin that doesn't really like you know, seal the deal. This seals the deal. I just don't like when it gets down and it gets goopy. Another one I've been using is the Essie, just their top coat from their gel couture line. This nail polish line is fabulous. If you want a nail polish that's really, really going to withstand, you know, dishwashing, scrubbing toilets, digging out, you know, I was weeding the garden and, you know, just like real life stuff. This line works well and this is a nice top coat. Now it's definitely thinner of a formula than this, um, but it is nice. Oh, next is a foundation, the Dior Star Foundation. That foundation had just come out that summer and I bought it and I did a full review on it. I recently just got rid of that foundation because, number one, I've had it for three years and it was starting to kind of like react with my face and so it was time to move on and part from it. But I really enjoyed that foundation. It was a nice fuller coverage, medium to full coverage foundation. I would definitely repurchase it. Um, I had the shade 20 if you wanted a shade reference and I, I enjoyed it. Check out that review if you want to know all of my thoughts about it. Of course, some of my thoughts might have changed since that review, but... Just, I'll just link it below in case you're interested. The next thing I was loving was this IT Cosmetics OMG Airbrush Foundation Brush. So these had this had just come out that summer as well. I remember Tati was raving about it. And for the most part, I trust Tati's reviews and I respect her opinion on things. I'll, you know, not everything, but you know, we're different people, different skins. We live in different climates, that kind of thing. But I bought this on her recommendation and I was enjoying it. Now, I've since really gone back to using my Beauty Blender. I just bought a new one and it just makes such a world of difference. I really like how it smushes the foundation into my face. Um, this doesn't leave brush strokes though, which is a plus. That's my one thing about brushes that is that you have to make sure um, that you really blend it in or you can see like brush strokes. I also don't like how much product a brush can absorb. Um, and then if you don't keep it up washed, then my face breaks out because there's like a bunch of different types of foundations in there because I use the same brush for different foundations and I rotate my foundations. Um, I do like this. I'm not like, oh my gosh, OMG, you need this. 
Um, I like it. I think that's all I have to really say about it. The Lancome Sills Booster Lash Primer. I liked that. I haven't really like consistently kept up with doing a lash primer and I think it's because when you use a lash growth serum, it essentially does what a lash primer does which is, you know, get your lashes to look fuller and thicker and longer and it, you know, a lash primer really does work. Um, it's just an extra step. And I don't love that, but at nighttime, I use this. And so I think because I'm using this, I don't feel the need to do a lash primer plus a mascara. And if you're going to wear false lashes, you're not going to mess with all of that anyways. I just do a light coat of mascara and then plop these on. Now, in my day-to-day -day life, if I wear makeup, I don't put false lashes on. Um, sometimes I do, depending on, on the occasion. But for the most part, I don't anymore. But I would say try a lash serum. Honestly, like if you love what a lash primer does and and you love the, you know, the combination of that with the mascara, try a lash primer because you'll probably find that you don't need all those steps when you put your mascara on anymore. Just a suggestion. The It Cosmetics My Sculpted Face Palette. That was the next thing that I was loving and I do love the tones of that. Now, since the original one that I showed, um, they've redone it with slightly different colors. I don't have it to compare to the old one, um, but... It, it's, it's a face sculpting palette. It's a contour palette, and at the time, that was like the beginning of the contouring craze, at least on YouTube, not in like real life. Um, but I don't really contour that much anymore. You know, you do it because everyone's doing it, and yeah, it looks cool. If you're doing like a full glam face, it absolutely adds some sculpting. But I find if you really get a good bronzer and even like a blush, like I myself am one to just take a deeper toned blush and sculpt out my cheeks between a bronzer and a deeper blush and then pop a lighter color in your cheeks, you don't really need to do sculpting. So today I just have a bronzer on and a blush and highlighter. So I don't really do it anymore. Um, the Shade and Light palette is the, the one palette that I have now. I got rid of that It Cosmetics one because it was probably four years old and not that it was bad I just I don't know I'm just at this state of my channel and just my makeup collection that I don't want so much clutter I only want things that I'm going to reach for and I've kind of condensed like categories down to like you know like one contour palette is more than enough when I don't use it very often so I have the shade and light one I do like this one I primarily use these two colors I never use this on my face I sometimes have used it for eyeshadow when you're in a pinch this is a great eyeshadow palette I mean you got you know your lighter shades here the, the light kind of makes it there we go a le more yellow toned one a peach one and then just like a basic flesh toned one but I just don't really do this too much anymore you know so I just I, in my day-to-day -day life I just just don't. Oh, I had some good blushes I was loving that month, and honestly, I still love them all, so I will share them with you. The first one is Burberry's Earthy. <sighs> I mean, the packaging. Burberry's packaging just draws me in. I just really, I like that plaid. It's very substantial, too, if you've never purchased or played with Burberry. I mean, you're definitely getting a good quality compact. So this is number seven, Earthy. It's a very, it comes with a little brush that clearly I've never used because it's still in the packaging. Um, it's a very different blush. In fact, when you initially look at it, you're like, that It does not look like a blush shade. It's a good nude. It really is. It's not a yellow undertone nude. It's not pinky undertone. It's just a really neutral undertone. So if you don't like blush or you really literally just want like a nude Kim Kardashian, I, you know, type look like that or J-Lo or just a really bronzy, glowy type of look, um, this would do it for you. It's going to give you that a little bit of sculpting action. Um, it's going to give you like shadows on your face without depositing like a pink or a coral or a berry shade. So it is really neat. It is a neat shade to own. It's definitely the most unique thing I have. So if you're looking for a new blush and you want something unique, test this out. Um, pigmentation's there, buildability's there. Uh, very creamy uh, to the touch, very smooth, very finely milled. Just you, you get what you pay for here. Next, I talked about my all-time favorite NARS blush, which you know what it's going to be if you've been with me, NARS Oasis. If you're looking for a beautiful, beautiful, softly shimmering, berry-toned blush, which this is the time of year for it, fall and winter are just, I love those colors. This is it. This is a duo. Uh, this is the Laguna Bronzer. So honestly, if you see this compact come out again, this is a better value than to buy a NARS blush individually because you get more blush in this than you do in this, which is shocking because this is, I think, a couple dollars more than one of these. So definitely pick it up in a duo if you see it. But this color, I suppose I could have swatched it for you. It is just, oh, it's got the most beautiful little uh, sheen to it, too. 
it's gorgeous and you blend that out and as you can see I'm not super fair right now but I'm definitely in that light category it's not too dark I think if you're fair it will still work for you I think if you're deeper skin toned oh it just be stunning you know really gorgeous let me swatch that earthy too there's the Burberry earthy as you can see it's a very barely there color now of course you can build that and then there's the oasis which is just stunning Next is the NARS Madly Blush. I actually haven't reached for this much in a while. Um, it's kind of similar to a Burberry. I will swatch it for you. I think the Burberry formula is better. Like if I had to choose, no, it's a little warmer. If I had to choose one over the other, well, maybe I wouldn't. They're not quite the same. Formula-wise, I love the Burberry. So there's the Madly. It has a little bit more warmth to it, maybe a slight more peach, a little more bronze. Whereas you can see that Burberry is just very different, isn't it? Um, but I do like the NARS formulation. I think that this is kind of a... I think on the website it describes it as a seashell pink, if I could be mistaken. Ever so softly does it have a pink undertone. It is pretty though, isn't it? I think that's another good, like, barely there bronzy color. Like, if you want to do a really smoky eye or you want to do a really minimalistic eye and a red lip, um, these two are good shades. Actually, I really do like Oasis with the red lip, though, too. Um, and the one I'm wearing today is Clinique Totally Tawny. I really seriously hope this is still available. I think this is another must-have. I need to do another, like makeup underdog must have kind of video because I would include this even though I think I've done that and included this blush it's just so good like you open it up in the pan and you're like eh, doesn't really no 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 you need to try this on I have this on today it just and as you can see I'm pairing it with like a pinky lip so there's the totally tawny it's totally I don't want to blind you oh it's good it's good guys it's just it's got a little bit more like a, it's like a mocha pink that's what I would describe it as, like a mocha pink. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's it's lovely. It really is a lovely addition to your collection. It pairs with a lot of things, and it's a nice formulation. This was the highlighter. I had, I didn't realize that I bought this highlighter in 2014. It's the Too Faced Candlelight Glow. I think they've since re-released it and changed... Like, they added another color. Like, it's like a peachy one, but this is the one with the pink. Now, it's almost got, like, a golden... Like, when I look at my cheeks, it has, like, a pink to golden shift to it. Now, I bought this because... Um, Oh my gosh, uh, what's her name from the M&M, M&L show? She was on The Bachelor. Anyways, this was her favorite highlighter. Uh, what is her name? I want to say like Melissa or I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, she was using this and it's her favorite highlighter and she's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's got dark hair and like, I don't know if she has blue or green eyes. Maybe they're brown. All I know is she's stunning and when she puts this on her face, her cheeks are just like yummy. And so I bought that, this highlighter, because of her. I like it. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite highlighter ever, but it is pretty. Because it's very glowy, almost like dewy, wet kind of color. And it has like a, a little bit of a yellow, not yellow, but like golden shift to it. I don't know. I do like it. I do like it. Yeah, there it is swatched. It's good. It is a very, it's definitely more of a really glowy highlighter not in that category of like barely there like say the hourglass or the laura mercier would be but it's 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 a good one max plum lip liner this is the first mac lip liner next to cherry i bought this one first because i bought it to go with max rebel lipstick that I, I remember my first time in mac um this is a good one um it's it's a plum color but it's got some brown it's got some mauve i pair this with a lot of things it's, it's kind of reminiscent of, say, Ideal from Lancome, but that's going to be a lot more brown and more neutral. I, I love this plum. I wear this with a lot of things. The other, yes? And a rock. And a rock? For your decoration. For my decoration. Thank you. And the link goes in the water. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> my son just got back from a bike ride, and he brought me a leaf and a rock for my decorations. The other lip liner I was loving is Spice. I still really like Spice. 
I'd say this is a must-have for MAC. I use this one all the time with my nudes, like peachy nudes and stuff. Or even, see, like for instance, I would pair this with like a coral lip because it's going to have those warm undertones, but it's going to be a really nice contrast and contour for your lips. So those two lip hunters still, yes, love them. couple MAC lipsticks. Uh, syrup. This is a luster formula. Super glossy. This one's broken because I think my son got into this one. Um... Okay, so here's Syrup. It's super glossy. It reminds me of, remember the Revlon Lip Butters? Um, it's kind of like that, but like a better, more, um, less thick formula. Just really glossy and just a really comfortable, good. This one's a good one to pair over. I would pair it with that plum lip liner, honestly. That would be really pretty. Like a soft berry. Like if you don't like a really deep, rich berry shade, but you just want like a whisper of mauvey pink, that's a good one. Um, the other one was Cream in Your Coffee. This is a cream sheen formula. This is another really yummy one. Ooh, I would pair this with Plum Lip Liner too. Isn't that beautiful? It's a little bit more of like a redwood. Like a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. It's really good. Both of those are really easy colors to wear too. Um, and then today's lip combo. So this is the color I wore by itself in the video, Raquel. And now I thought it was just a little bit too, let me wipe this off because I, I have this in the center of my lips today. I thought it was a bit too light on its own for me. Now this is a beautiful nude, okay? I just, I don't know, on myself. This formula is very uh, opaque. So for an, if you don't like a super opaque nude, I don't know. But the formula is really nice. That is Raquel right there. It's like a pinky, beigey nude. Which I like. I like a pinky beige nude more than something that's too brown for my skin tone. Um, but the Audacious, Audacious formula is nice. It's just really, it's kind of thick. But it's, it's, it's good, but it's thicker, you know what I mean? Compared to, like, say, the MAC ones. And then all over today I have the Bite Beauty Fig, which is just a classic, really yummy. Let me wipe this one off too. Really yummy, super creamy luminous glossy lipstick that is fig right there and i have that i have no gloss on today i just have on the plum lip liner with the uh, raquel lipstick in the center and the rest of my lips is this this pretty pink fig fig <laughs> fig shade you know if you're not a, into super pink lipsticks try this color because it's not like barbie pink you know and the last thing is the Too faced melted these are still around, right? Um, I wore this to work. Um, I used to uh, freelance for Smashbox, and we, like, red lips. Like, I had to wear all black, and a red lip just really stood out. So this is the one I always wore. It stayed on. Um, this is the Melted Ruby. It's long-wearing. It does have a different applicator, so you, like, squeeze it out and apply it like this. But I kind of like that. I don't think it's sanitary for using it on, like, say, clients or whatever, but this color is freaking gorgeous on it's blue undertoned so it's not going to make your teeth look yellow i just think it's so sexy and it's absolutely stunning on the face like i, I would do lashes wing liner simple crease color like a nude blush or a berry blush and this on my lips and it's just a classic iconic look Alrighty, that is everything that I was loving three years ago. Um, do you guys like these throwback favorites? I personally do. I find them helpful. I find them informational. I find them fun to go back and see like what you used to like to see if you still like it now or not. You get a good idea about a review on a product. It's kind of like a jam-packed video in my opinion. So if you guys enjoy this, thumbs up this video and let me know down in the comments um, that yes, Please keep these around because I think they're just a great all-around video. And I like to go back and see see how much we've changed, where we have come from. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And we will chat very soon. Bye, guys.